Well, welcome back to the channel. This is a follow-up on the video that I did, on my first video that I did with Nuxt and Nuxt, clearly VJS, Ionic Framework, and Capacitor. In the first one, I just showed how to use Capacitor to take a Nuxt mobile application and deploy it on device. And in this one, I'm going to add Ionic to that also. You could use any UI component framework that you want to use, but I'm just using Ionic to kind of show how it fits in. And also, it's just what I'm very comfortable with. So let's kind of get started on adding Ionic to this project. I'm going to move my head down here. Also, please make sure you like, subscribe. Feel free to give comments um, on my video and thoughts on other things you'd like to see. So just to kind of catch up where you are right now, we just have a basic app with the home page and an about page and you go back and forth. Um, we did deploy this to device previously and there's no real look of a mobile application or ionic getting rated. So that's what we're gonna do here. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go down here and we wanna install, let me kinda make this bigger. You can see we're gonna install ionic view and ionic core. So let's install them, and then looks like that's set. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a plugin. So you know how normally you do the excuse me, you do the create app and you and you load in Ionic. Um, so we, there's a way to do that with a plugin. So we're going to go into our directory here called plugins. We're going to create Ionic io i o n i c Ionic. .js, this will be our plugin. And then the code, also just to let you know, I'm creating a blog post that's gonna go along with this. And um, all the source code and the steps will be included in the blog post. So we go in here and inside we've created our Ionic plugin and what you can see here is it loads Ionic. And you get this Ionic view object and then you take the view app and you say use Ionic view with the view app. And so that's how you get Ionic in there, loaded in your plugin. Let me make sure I'm running so as things change, you can see the changes. Okay, so we have our Ionic plugin set. The next thing we want to do is because if you're familiar, well, let's go, let's hop to our next config and, oh, God, sorry, planes flying by. We need to add in that base CSS that Ionic needs. And so there's a bunch of imports that we can bring in here. And um, normally when you create your app with the template, you get a list of all those CSS files already built in. And so I'm just gonna cut and paste and drop them in here. Ah, not that. You need the CSS files. That's the stuff I previously pasted in, copy. This is kind of that default set of CSS that you need. So let's try again. All right, that's a little bit better. And so this is the CSS that you need to give you that to make the Ionic components work properly. It's gonna rebuild this thing. Well, let's say I got an error, the server's not running. Let's restart my server. Okay, so you can see the font changed a little bit because it's loaded this CSS. All right, so now normally in an Ionic app, in the main TS, you kind of um, wrap everything in the Ionic app component. Since we don't have that, what we can do is we can create a layout that will manage all that. But to use a layout, I need to put my app view file back in. So let's go down and let's create a new file. And then inside the app view, you can specify a layout. Well, first, when you first drop the app view in, you don't really need a layout because your app view is pretty straightforward. And let's copy that. So this is, this is what your app view looks like. And so basically what's gonna happen is all your pages are gonna go through here and they're gonna be rendered here where it says Nux page. And you could wrap it all with the, with the kind of high level layout. You can also specify layout at the page level. But what we're gonna do is we, we know that everything needs to be wrapped in that, um, oh my goodness, a little flying here or something, sorry. Everything needs to be wrapped in that Ionic app. So what we're gonna do is inside of our um, layout, which we're gonna call Ionic app also, though we say new, 
ionic app dot view and in here we're going to handle kind of wrapping everything with um, the ionic app component that it needs and so this should look a little familiar to you ionic folks out there and so what will happen is um, also we're setting the viewport appropriately here for the mobile device with this use head so basically every page will have all of this stuff in it and so sorry we have the ionic app and then all of our pages will be rendered in this slot here so this is our layout and it's important that the name of this file must also be the name that you use here inside of your layout so i see it's i have ionic app and just also so that you know it's working you can see if i go in here and if i say um You can see how it's got all my pages in there. And even if I switch to my about page, you can see that it's still showing this hello. So that's letting you know that everything is going through this layout. So I let's see, let's go back to my steps. I installed Ionic. I added my CSS. I put my plugin in to load Ionic. And um, I created my layout to make sure that everything's inside of an Ionic app. So now let's go to my pages and add some basic Ionic um, UI. So the first thing we probably want to do is give it the normal um, mobile heading header that you need there. It's a bunch of code. It's a standard code. Um, I'll, I'll just drop that in also. It's your usual Ionic header, Ionic content, Ionic page stuff. So let's just take this div out. Let's take this div out the top here, and then we're just going to wrap this whole section here with an ionic content, ion content, and then you know we need an ion page, and a format, and that, not that. Let me go back here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is down here in our setup, we're going to import the stuff we need. So say setup, I'm sorry, script setup. Um, lang type script, and then what we can do here is we can import the ionic things that we need. So ion page, ion header, ion title, uh, ion tool, bar, ion, content. Okay, so what is it missing? Template from, oh, uh, sorry, from ionic view. So it looks like I just added this. This is my, what page did I add this to? Looks like I added, oh, I got it backwards. This is my home page, so this is home. And let's put some padding around this content. Where is this? Uh, this goes ion padding. We get some padding around that. And just to show we have Ionic going in here, let's change this to an Ion button. Go to a about page. And let's add our button as an object down here. So under content. So we get our go to about page and then I could continue to use the Nuxa link, but then also just to show you some other stuff, let's do this. Const router equals use router. Remember everything when you use this kind of script set up here, all these things are exposed to the template. So now I can just go up here and in my I am button, I can say click 
router push about. Um, oh, I can't use double quotes again because I already used them. So let's switch these to single quotes and that and that and home page, go to about page. All right, so now we can kind of remove this link. And then let's kind of just, what we're, just to make it easy, we're gonna copy all this and go to our about page and give it the Ionic look too. This is the about page. And here we want to say go home. And then since we have the router here, we can just say router dot, I think back. Yeah, we just say router back. Hmm. Go to about page, go home. Uh, where's this? Uh, let's go back to my index view. I thought I took that link out. This is the about page, go home. We go, let's go back to my index. Hmm, let me. All right, that's better. Go to about page, go home. All right, so that's kind of what we wanted to do. We have Ionic integrated. You can see we're using have access to all the Ionic components. And so now for the final part of the video, we want to demonstrate that we can actually deploy it to device. So once again, we're going to use our trusty um, Ionic Visual Studio Code extension. I already have something running in my simulator. Let's see, what do I have in my simulator? All right, let's run, let's run the new build with the new UI inside my simulator. All right, so here we have it's launched. We can see the attic look and feel. We have the navigation app we want. We can go to our pages. Um, and so there it is running on iOS. And let's, as, as usual, be a little patient with me as I get my Android emulator going. I probably could have prepped and had this running beforehand, but let's do this. Let's launch my Android Studio first. Unless we, we can launch the, um, see, do I already have, I believe I already have, yeah. So let's just get this thing started and let's, Let's get an emulator open for us to use. So that's the old app running in the emulator. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna switch the emulator here to this Pixel 3 API 31. So we can, you can click on these three dots here and, and it'll give you the list and you can switch them. Now we're switching it, and then it should push the build to that new emulator. See, it's changed the target pixel API 3.1. Let's close these for now. So now we have the same code running in the browser and on an Android device and an iOS device. That's kind of what I want to cover in this video. I'm going to go a little bit deeper into uh, some more cool things you can do with uh, Nuxt, Ionic, and Capacitor in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave comments below. Thanks, and bye now.